Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at the fundamental counting principle, specifically focusing on factorials. So factorials. Certain types of counting occur more frequently, such as possible arrangements of a given number of objects. So for example, if I had five different candy bars, how many different ways could I consume the five different candy bars where I have one right after the other? For any counting number n, the quantity n factorial is given as so we would say that the number of ways, so I said candy bars, <laughs> I could eat my first candy bar and I would have n options to choose from. Once I consume one, now I have n minus one to choose from. And then n minus two and so on. So I'm gonna say dot, dot, dot until I get down to three possibilities and then two possibilities and one possibility. So we would say that when there's n objects and I'm trying to do something, arrange them or eat them or whatever, um, the factorial would be n times 1 less than n times 2 less than m, n all the way down. And the notation that we use for factorial is we say n factorial. It's a very excited n, n factorial. Let's look at some examples. So we want to evaluate 4 factorial. This is not 4 exclamation point. It's not a really excited 4. It's 4 factorial. So 4 factorial would be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which would give us 24. 7 factorial would be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which would be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, 5,040. And 10 factorial would be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which would be 3,628,800. 3,628,800. So this is how we can evaluate factorials without a calculator. In your calculator, you might be able to find it, but I'm not going to tell you where in case your teacher doesn't want you to know. Um, sorry. All right, so let's use factorials. How many ways could the letters of PAL be arranged? So in this case, there's three to choose from because there's it's a three letter word. So we can have three possibilities for the first, two possibilities for the second, and one possibility for the third, right? So this is three times two times one, which is the equivalent of three factorial, which would be six. Another application of factorials, seven friends attend a movie together. There are seven seats for them to sit in. How many ways can the seven friends be arranged in these seats? So again, what this is looking at, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven possibilities for the first seat, but once somebody's sitting, now there's only six possibilities for the seat next to them, and then five, and then four, three, two, one. So this is the equivalent of seven factorial, which I think we already calculated to be 5,040. So if there's seven people, there's 5,040 different ways that these seven people could be sitting in seven seats that are consecutive, which is kind of crazy to think about, right? Okay, in our last example, I reach into my wallet and pull out all of my money. My wallet is empty. Sad day. How many ways can I pull out my money? So this is an important one because this is saying I have nothing to pull out of my wallet. So what does this mean? What does zero factorial mean? Well, how many ways can I pull nothing out of my wallet? There's one way and that's to pull nothing out of my wallet. So while normally when we're talking about factorials, we are talking about positive integers, we do include zero here, um, just so that nothing breaks down in the end, and zero factorial is considered to be one. So for factorials, we would say zero factorial is one, which is kind of like the weird one. One factorial is one. Two factorial is two times one, which is two. And then three factorial is three times two times one, which is six and on and on and on. So the only weird one that we see is zero factorial. This has been a quick lesson on factorials. Thank you for stopping by.